when I was preparing my live demonstration, this is what I came up with for my sketch. And I just drew my spritz bottle. And let's do that same thing here because I'm going to show you how I can build up the tones when I'm doing a sketch, out urban sketching or just sketching a still life, something like that. Here's my spritzer bottle. I'm drawing the top and then the nozzle is just a cylinder. And then we'll just put an oval here for the top of the cap and another cylinder here. Let's do some lines here because that's these little vertical lines, ridged cap, so that we know it's a cap. I'm not trying to be too precise as far as making it match exactly the length and width and everything of the bottle. I'm just drawing a spritzer bottle. And then I've got the top of the bottle here. And then a long body of the cylinder bottle of the spritzer. And then another oval at the bottom. Now, how easy was that? Pretty easy. I could even put the price tag in here. Let's put the price tag over here. Put some barcodes on that. Just for fun. Let's put the little let's put the little spray nozzle in there. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to over here now. Sometimes I'll do this directly on the paper that I'm sketching. Sometimes I'll have another scrap piece of paper and I'll build my palette off to the side. In the case of this sketch, I knew that I was going to have a dark area right in here, so I created my ink palette down in this area. And, you know, you just... You, it was handy. It was there. It wouldn't hurt to sketch it. It probably enhanced it. And when I say build my palette, here again, I'm just drawing a body of ink on the page so that I can get it wet and use it almost as a watercolor. And by the way, I wanted to mention, these are applications that I'm showing you, these that I'm demonstrating are not unique to the pens that I'm using. These are pen and ink techniques. These are drawing techniques. What's so fun about this is that I'm using an R2 ballpoint pen to create these. And it's a very inexpensive tool to use. And I just, I like it a lot. <laughs> I sketch with it a lot. So I'm just building up my ink palette here, my little square of ink. For this, I'm going to use this medium brush again and spritz it. Now I do like, you can just spritz it and get and let the water flow all over the place, but I like to just put a couple drops of water in there. And I say spritz it because this is the way that I'm putting it there. You might have a little bowl of water, a little tube of water, and just let it drop down. So here I have this nice, ooh, this nice spot of color. And then I'm going to come over here and almost paint my spritzer bottle. So I'm just building up the tones here. My light source is coming from this direction, so I want the darker areas to come into here. And by the way, you do not have to do it this way. You could you could spritz these lines and they would spritz, but I'm just, I'm just letting them, I'm doing what I call the controlled bleed here. I am moistening these lines with the brush to get the effect that I want. And like I say, I'm transferring ink from this palette over here that I built up all this luscious ink. And I'm transferring it over to this side of the bottle. And I'm just imagining the bottom here. So let's say that here we want to, we want a volume. We're going to show some volume in here. So we're going to leave our background on this side white. But we, we know that this bottle is white. But it's, there's just, well, in fact, there's a water level line here. So let's put in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my towel handy. And I'm going to build a water level just like that. But I want to work fast here because I want to blot it. 
and that will give us that really light tone in there, which will, we know it's still white. In fact, I probably could have worked a little bit faster, <laughs> but it's not the white that we see out over on this side. You'll see on, on this sketch, I really have some nice different tint values, different tones in here. There's some darks and some lights and some medium colors. That's what I'm working for on this one. I want a really dark area in the background, so I want to build up these tones. And because the ink is still ink, it's still, there's nothing, this ink is no darker than this ink. What makes it darker is the buildup of the ink. And, and did you blot it? And when you blot it, you're actually lifting some of the ink from the page. And of course, you can get really dark if you use your pen, as I did in here, and, and get a really dark palette. So in order for this to build up, I find that if I dry it, and then come back in and put in another layer, and we're just putting more and more ink on the areas that we want to be dark. In fact, I could probably, I don't know if I can get more out of that or not. Let's see. So I'm just continually building up the dark layers. In fact, I, I'll dry it again here. And of course, you could do this. Same thing over here. And get this really dark, dark area here if you wanted to. But the point of this is to show how you can build up the tones to go from dark to light. Let's give it a little bit darker around the edge here. Let's make a waterline in there. Give it a waterly. There. So we've talked here about building up the palette, using the tonals, using the palette to build the tones, using the palette to soften the lines, a uh, wet palette, and in fact, this blotted over into my wet palette. My wet palette would not have any ink in it. Uh, demo of a, an ink palette, and then the pen comparisons here. So the next thing I want to talk about is the things that I found that do not work as well. 